Good morning. So let's go ahead and grab a little bit of weight to start with. We're gonna grab a weight for each hand. If you have something a little heavier, let's go ahead and start challenging yourself with that weight. But remember, it's a warm up. We're gonna do a few sets of these marches, so we can always move up a little bit if you choose something that's uh, a little safer to warm up with. So with our two weights handy, we also want a band that we're gonna use right after this, but just go ahead and throw it on the floor in front of you so it's handy, but you're not, in, you're not using it quite yet. So when you pick your weights up, let's use good form, knees nice and wide, hips back, and let's go ahead and start our marches. When you're marching, it's really important that you keep your hips in front of your ankles. We don't wanna be marching in the back of our heels. We also wanna make sure we're driving the length down through the middle of your knee, down through the middle of your hip, with each step into the ground. And we want to make sure those heels aren't making too solid of a contact with the ground. They are going to touch, but we're not going to really put a lot of weight into them. We also want to pick up our toes as we're lifting them, making sure that we're not letting them hang down like dancer toes. We want to really pull them up, flex our ankles, driving our shoulders to the floor as we really strongly grip the bells, lengthen through the back of your neck as your chin tucks slightly. And now let's rest. We're going to keep the weights, widen up your feet a little bit, and I want to just do one set of our squats with those big bells, and you should never see daylight between your legs and the bells. They should be riding your legs down as you push your knees wide and you send your hips back. We never want your knees sliding forward. We want to make sure the head is lengthening through the back of the neck at the bottom of the squat just as much as at the top of the squat. Avoid looking up as you go down. Last one. Good. All right. So let's go ahead and put your weights down for a second. This is when you're going to grab those bands. And let's go ahead and put the band on your wrists. And as we do these, we're going to do some squats as your hands go up towards the sky. So. Knees go wide, hips go back, band goes up, arms push into the strap just a little bit. We're not trying to fight the band. We're using it as a placeholder that we're pushing lightly into to make sure that our arms are driving upward as our shoulders and our ribs stay anchored. We want to make sure those knees don't slide down in any way. We also want to make sure that your feet don't leave the ground. If you feel your heels or toes lift off, then we need to go through a little bit smaller range of motion. All right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna go back to our bands. And this time when we're starting our marches, we're gonna start at the same, same speed and then we're gonna slow it down so we kind of turn into balance marches during this set. So safely pick your weights up off the ground and just start in your normal march. Get your form down, shoulders and ribs anchored to the floor, back of the neck reaching up to the ceiling, toes pulling up with each step, length driving through the knee and the hip with each step. And now slow it down and focus on a little bit of balance. So about three seconds, find your balance and then switch. The bell should give you a little bit of support and a little bit of something to hold on to. You're activating your core muscles while we're doing this. So it should help your balance. And if you really focus on your hips trying to push forward with each step, we're trying to make our hips go in front of our ankle bones. If you can see me on your screen, you should also see there's a little space or daylight showing in a triangle between my legs each time I lift. I don't wanna pinch my leg across and lose that space. Good, let's go one more each leg. Really squeezing those bells, anchoring the ribs. And let's go ahead and set the bells down off to the side, good form. And we're gonna grab those bands again. And so for the band this time, we're gonna do the squat, but we're gonna reach our arms out in front of us. So not so much up in the air, but straight out from your shoulders. Same thing, band on the wrists. Let's go ahead and just push those hips back and knees wide as we lengthen those arms straight out in front of us. 
as the arms reach forward, pull your shoulder blades back away from those hands. If my hand were right in front of your rib cage at the bottom, make sure that you're pushing away from my hand so that you're not letting your upward position take you out of your abs. We want to make sure that you're not completely looking up and reaching up and losing focus of those upper abs. So let's give me two more, reaching those arms straight forward in front of the chest, bringing them in as you come up. One more. And let's go ahead and you can set your band down. And we're going to do one more set of marches, but we're going to hold the weights up a little higher. So you'll want a lighter weight this time than you used last time. You can either use a bottoms up position or you can do uh, uh, the position where it rests on your, on your wrists. And let's go ahead and we're going to really double challenge ourselves and we're just going to use one weight. Okay. So even though it's one weight instead of two, the difference is that now we've got to use other muscles in our body to make sure that the one weight doesn't tip us, rotate us, turn us. So make sure that whatever weight you pick, you can always maintain a square hip and shoulder position. You don't want to find yourself turning or twisting trying to hold this weight. So whatever position, whether it be in the, in the bottom down position or if you want to challenge to the bottoms up position, let's go ahead and march. If you're in a bottoms up position, remember it's all about the balance. Your wrist should be straight. We never want to have our wrist buckle like this and we don't want to death grip it with our hand. We're really trying to just use our elbow and that strong wrist and our abs to keep that balance and to focus on this area and not how high we pull that weight up in the air. Good. Let's go ahead and slowly bring that down, switch arms, keep your feet moving and let's go ahead and bring it up. If you're doing the bottoms up position, make sure you find that strong wrist before you let go with the other hand. Pulling the toe up, drifting the knees wide, but maintaining good position, good balance in that arm. Three, two, and let's go ahead and rest and bring that weight down to the ground. All right, so what we're gonna do next is a little bit of a, a lateral squat. So. What you're going to do is you need your band again and we're going to put the band on our wrists and as we do this, if you need to grab a little drink of water, go for it. As we do this action, what I want is we're going to start in a squat position. So just step, put your feet a little wide, feel out that squat and then what I want you to do is Start at the bottom with your hands in the bands and I want you to keep that tension pushed out into those bands and let's bring it a little closer to our elbows just to keep it out of your neck. And now I want you to push and stand up and then I want you to sidestep and squat down. Every time you come up, you're pushing length out of the middle of your knee, pushing your hip away from the ground. Every time you're going down, you're widening up your hips, you're widening your knees, you're sending your hips back. I'm gonna do a couple sideways for you. So really stepping, making sure every time that you step and squat that you're finding the center of your feet with your belly button. We don't wanna be shifting over to one side more than another. Perfect. All right, so now take your band off, shake your arms a little bit. If there are water on your hands, think of it as we're just trying to like flick the water off release any tension in those arms. We're getting ready to do the other side. When we do the other side, again, keep that square position. Make sure we're not twisting with these side lunges or side squats. So let's start in the squat position so we know what we want to drop into each time. So bands to the elbows or right below the elbows or above the elbows, whichever way you want to look at it. And now from that low squat and those pushed arms, step up and push to the other side and then drop down, drop right into the middle of your feet and then push back up, spreading your hips as you go down, driving energy away from the floor as you come up. 
ribs anchoring down, back of the neck lengthening, feeling that opening and push with each action. Let's and take your hands out, rest for a second, roll them a little bit. Sorry, my connection was going out, luckily it's back. So I wanna go down to the ground next. So we don't need equipment for these next couple, maybe a block, cause we're gonna do a beast and if you wanna have a little challenge checker, you can use that. But we're gonna also do a shin box real quick before we get into our beast position. So just in case you're a new joining us today, the shin box, we want to start with both knees bent, both feet and ankles stacked on top of each other and with a little lean to the side. Slide the bottom foot forward as you push the, bot back, the top leg back. And then just make sure that your toe is even with your knee and your foot's just gently on your thigh. Now, it might be comfortable for you to sit up. You may feel that you've got this list and it's fine. Just make sure you're not trying to stand up or sit up and having any pain here. Just allow that shift to the side, it's fine. We're just assessing your position right now. We're not looking to try and get perfect. And so whatever your position of upright pelvis without tipping through the hips is, that's what I just want you to assess. Now let's switch to the other side just to feel how it compares to this one. Swing your feet around, put your weight into the other arm, stack your knees up, stack your ankles and your toes up. And then let's go ahead and slide your bottom leg forward, your top leg back so that the foot is resting on your thigh, even with your toes and knee. And then again, feel what does the position feel like that you're in? Does it feel different than the last one? It's just a comparison. We wanna see that during this workout, we hopefully make you feel like you're either evening up your hip back then you need to go up a little bit higher on your placement so that you can really find out how to feel the best way to get your plank so today I'm gonna to go on the floor but please find whatever position works for you and so if you're starting from the floor or any other position put your hands onto the place that you're gonna put them and real quickly before we even do our first plank uh, oh sorry we're on our elbows <laughs> Uh, when, before we do our lap first plank, I want you to do a drill just to make sure that your neck is doing what it should and you are, are solid with what you want to feel. And so what I want you to do before we go into your plank, you, you're, you're just resting your hands on that position and I want you to push your chin and your neck away from your elbows and then let them sink back down again. And I want you to feel how when you push your chin and your, the back of your neck away from the mat as your shoulders drive down, you're waking up a lot of muscles that work that shouldn't put strain. They just should feel different because most of the time they're not working correctly or not working enough. So just make sure when we do our plank that you're thinking about that just as much as anything else that I say. And that's why I wanted to kind of start it with it. So now let's go ahead. Put your elbows down, hands are flat, and let's go ahead and step out into our lunge. I mean our plank, sorry. Step into your plank, and I want you to really push your shoulders away from your elbows and your ears, and drive yourself onto the knuckles of your toes. And now I want you to really keep those heels nice and high as you focus on pushing your rib cage. If my hand were right underneath your ribs right here, you want to push your ribs and the back of your neck away from the mat as far as you can. And we're going to hold this here for another 10 seconds. Just focus on shoulders pushing away from the elbows and your ears, pushing your neck away from the floor and straightening those knees and hips as much as you can. Three, 
two, let's bend your knees, stick your butt up in the air. And if you're, if you're doing something up higher, come up to a stand. If you're on the ground, go ahead and sit back onto your feet or a block, whatever feels comfortable for you. We're going to do our beast next. And with the beast, I want you to use a block if you have something handy. You could use a ball, but I find that the balls are almost too easy. They stay in the center. A block will be a little bit more tippy toppy, so you'll feel a little bit more feedback from the, from the block. But whatever you choose, let's go ahead and get into a hands and knees position with your knees wider than your hips. And let's go ahead and place the block in whatever position you're gonna use. Flat would be a one position, turned on its side would be a two position, up on its top would be a three position. So whatever position you're going to try, just make sure that if you constantly are messing with your block because it's falling, then choose an easier position or just let it fall off, but don't keep coming out of your beast to reposition your block. All right, so let's go ahead and first push our neck and our chin away from the ground as our shoulders anchor away from the ears. Now push your knees off the ground and widen them a little bit. And now let's do a little bit of walking if you can. If you can't walk yet, you're just working on pushing away from the ground with your shoulders as your knees and ankles and hips relax wide and try to avoid poking your butt in the air. You're just keeping it upturned while your knees stay low. Whoops, mine fell. If you need to reposition it once, that's okay. If you have to reposition it twice, that's change the position. <laughs> Let's hope I don't drop it again. Let's go ahead, five, four, three, two, and rest your knees down. Take your block off your back and go ahead and sit back onto your feet for a second or your block, whatever's comfortable. Before we go into our next beast, we're gonna do one more. What I want is you to do a little toe sit. So curl your toes under. If you'd like a weight, you're welcome to grab a weight. If you're not comfortable with a weight yet, that's okay. Just do this without one. And what I want you to do is with those toes tucked so the pads of your toes are on the ground, I want you to keep your knees nice and wide and stick your butt out bending from the bottom of your butt bone to sit onto your feet. You may be in a different position than me. You may get to here instead of sitting all the way back. But the key is we're never rounding or trying to fight in our back to get there. We're always keeping a nice straight back or a nice neutral spine as we hinge through our butt bones. And so if you've been sitting there for a while in it already, go ahead and rest, let your toes release. We're gonna do one more set. If you were kind of listening, then that's okay. You get a little bit more rest before we start. All right, so let's go ahead and tuck your toes. And sometimes I find that it helps to go on your hands and knees to really get your toes under you enough. And then let's go ahead and bring a weight up safely. No bending your back to get that weight up. And then just hold this position with your knees and ankles relaxing, your toes relaxing against that stretch even though they want to fight it with everything in your body, you just need to release through your toes, release through your knees. Keep the weight up by your chin so you don't round through your back. Imagine the back of your neck lengthening up as you hold that weight nice and light in your hands. Five, four, three, two. Bring the weight down between your knees. Bend forward and position that weight away from you. And go ahead and relax your toes and let them trust you again. Nice. We have to make sure those toes get uncomfortable sometimes. If we don't use it, we lose it. Rust, rest equals rust. So we want to make sure that we're not just giving in to tightnesses and things that hurt us or cause discomfort. We charge through them and keep asking ourselves to do them as long as they don't incur pain after we do them. Maybe a little discomfort, but we don't want to we don't want to keep pushing into things that cause us trauma. So if that causes your knees or your hips any aggravation, then reach out to me. I'll give you some suggestions for how to fix it. But listen to your body on all these exercises. We don't, we don't shrug at every pain that we feel, but if something 
is always associating that movement with pain, we need to reassess it. We need to make sure that we can't make it a little bit more efficient and a little bit more friendly to ourselves. So uh, let's go ahead and we're going to do one more of our beasts, but this time we're going to change it up again or just a little bit. And it's always optional with the changes. If you want to continue on with a regular beast or what you can do right now, if you're not able to crawl with a beast yet, this might not be your choice, okay? So you can use any weight that you feel you can drag across the ground. So here, I'm gonna turn this way for this one. And so essentially, I'm gonna leave my knees on for the demonstration, but we're gonna start with a kettlebell out to the side with the, with the horn or the handle facing the middle. And what you're going to do, let's just do a couple practices without your knees lifting so you can kind of feel if you're doing this right or try and decide if you even want to do this. And so what I want you to do is lift the opposite hand away from the bell off the ground by pushing through the down shoulder, lightly grip that kettlebell and then slide it across so it's outside of your body and then turn the handle back to the middle and then reverse it. So then you're pushing away with the close hand as you slide it through with the far hand, always flipping the handle before you put your hand back down. So if you're looking at me right now and saying, holy call, holy moly, I'm not doing that. I can't beast and do that. Then stay on your knees, do exactly the same thing that you were just doing a little bit for the demonstration and then you can work on lifting your knees when you feel ready. So don't push anything, hardest thing you do well, make sure you don't feel any tension in anything like your neck or joints. So let's go ahead and let's give me a set of these. So tuck your toes under. If you're gonna lift your knees, lift your knees. If not, stay on them. And now push through the hand closest to the bell so you can lift and slide through with the other one. We want our knees to stay loose and wide. We want our toes to stay loose. We want our, our ankles to remain loose. We want our shoulders pushing away from the ground. We want our back of the neck pushing away from the ground, which slightly tucks the chin, but don't focus on tucking the chin. Just push the neck away from the floor. One more time across, and let's rest your knees down. Sit back. Whatever position is comfortable, whether it's on a block, whether it's on your butt, whether it's on your knees, just take a second here, roll your shoulders. If you have water nearby, take a little sip. And we're gonna come back up to our feet. So if you wanna take your last little bit of that cool down or that, uh, that breather to clear your space a little bit, we're gonna get some weights, and the next thing we're gonna do is a shoot through. And with the shoot through, I would start with your, with something in the middle. If you know what I'm talking about, don't choose your heaviest weight. Choose your second down heaviest weight so you can go up on our next set, okay? Or we're gonna do three sets of these so you can kind of choose how you progress your weights up or down through those sets. Um, if you don't know what a shoot through is, and I'm gonna demonstrate what a shoot through is real quickly, then I want you to do an alternate, which I'll show right after the shoot through. So please make sure that you're only challenging yourself to do the hardest thing you do well. Don't, uh, it does take a leap of faith the first time you do a shoot through. So if you need something on the floor, like a rolled up mat or just something, do it on the floor that you don't care as much about, just in case you were to drop the kettlebell. I can honestly say I've never had anyone drop the kettlebell because they don't wanna mess up the floor or break their toes. But just so you know, there is a point where you let go of the weight a little bit. So. Let's see, for our shoot throughs, we want our feet a little wide. And again, this is just demonstration. You can do a couple with me if you want, but with the shoot throughs, we wanna make sure we always start with our elbows and arms pinched to our sides. We don't want space or hanging shoulders. So lock them back, pinch your sides, knees start wide, and then we shoot our hips up. So it's like you're like a slingshot. Your arms come down slow, your hips reach back slow, your neck lengthens, and then you shoot up like a slingshot to get that bell up to your chin. And when we're coming up, we, our arms should do nothing to lift the bell. They're practicing, I'm gonna come a little closer, they're practicing 
letting go and chicken winging so that they can catch the bell at the top and you should be catching the bell your hips should be tall before you catch the bell so if you're doing something and it feels like that then you're doing too much with your arms your hips need to move faster so let's give me one more if you've been working with me and then let's rest you can set the weight down on the ground now if you were doing those shoot throughs with me take a rest for a second the alternate for the shoot through is a regular squat so we're going to hold that weight on our belt on our hips we're going to lock our lats and shoulders together we're going to send your hips back and knees wide but my arms are always in contact with my body if you can see where that bell comes down it's dropping below my belly button it's not dropping in front of my feet never let your bell go in front of your knees or in front of your feet if you're doing that option so or at any point so let's go ahead and we're going to do another work set if you're doing the, the low squats you don't have to work on that explosive up but you can add it in if you'd like to once you feel that you're doing it just make sure that you don't feel your shoulders shrug up with that you're always locking those shoulders into place if you're doing that low squat all right sorry let's go ahead and let's give me a shoot through set of 30 seconds and all we're doing is opening the hips pinching the sides and then letting go as we shoot that bell up through our belly button we don't want the bell to come far away from our bodies if it's too far in front of you you're probably bicep curling it up and you want to really send those elbows wide like a chicken wing and you'll find that that bell slides right up beside your belly button and stays nice and close to your body now if you were doing the low squats i want you to go ahead and take a second to rest if you've been doing these shoot throughs with me and you want to do one stretch let's hold it up high sit your knees wide let your hips drop find that space that your elbows can touch your knees if right now your feet are off the ground in all sorts of places and your elbows can't touch your knees then set the weight down come up and just rest until we finish this set but i want you if you can hold this position and it feels good i want you to push your elbows wider to stretch out your knees and then i want you to use your knees to push into your elbows but don't let any ground give and then push through your elbows to widen your knees one more time back of the neck is lengthening shoulders are down push with your knees back in towards your elbows without losing ground and then let's gently set the weight down in front of us and then move up through our hips to stand up tall awesome so we're going to do a side plank in between our shoot throughs so the same thing applies as before if your side plank is best on a counter or maybe it's even a wall then that's where you need to do it I'm going to go on to I'll go onto the floor but there is middle ground on a table that might be low in your house but note that my foot position is always staggered I don't want you right now trying to stack your feet on top of each other we're always trying to put we're always trying to put our top leg so whatever hip is facing the top we want that foot to always be in front okay we also want the back heel so that back heel always needs to keep in contact with the ground so that we're driving our hips forward from that back heel okay all right so we're going to go for a set of these um i'm going to cue you into it from a plank a long arm plank facing forward but if you would like to just get into the side facing position to avoid that that's fine just the hardest thing that you can control so so we start in a plank or just go ahead and turn to the side and create your plank position we want to push our chest away from our hands we want to push our hips forward not up I don't want to see any hinges in those hips like that we want to just drive those hips forward away from that back heel on the leg that's on the floor on the back foot 
heel. We also want to make sure if there are a hand in front of our ribs, we're pushing away from it. We don't want to let things sag or come out. Keep the back of the neck long. If you need to look down and look up to find neutral in the middle again, then that's helpful. Now go ahead and if you're going to come out of it, just put your knees down and come out of it. If you'd like to come out of it with the rotation and then place the hand and then rest the knees down. So I like to do a plank lock rotation before and after a side plank. It just helps me reestablish that I'm not twisting and turning through my body and I have full control of that. But again, that's something that I teach my clients in person and I, it works, takes a little bit to find it. So if that's causing you to get out of form or to produce any shoulder tension, then just skip and go straight into the actual plank. All right, so we're gonna do the other side now. So if you're gonna go into it from a straight plank, find your plank lift one hand without any twist in your body then turn if you're coming into it from this position just go ahead and come into it now your bottom leg heel should be driving your hips forward your hand or your ribs should be pushing away from that imaginary hand your chest is trying to push away from the ground without tipping your hips into the air you can look down look up and then find neutral to find that neutral neck so you're not feeling tension there and then coming out of it, just turn your heels towards the ceiling, no twist, touch the hand, and then bend the knees down. Perfect. All right, so we got round two coming up. So we're gonna slowly make our way back up to our feet for our shoot throughs. Grab a little drink of water. With this shoot through set, I'm going to give a little bit of a challenge. So I'm going to do a one handed shoot through to clean, bringing it up to here. And so if that is completely foreign to you, stick with the double one that we just did, which would be exactly like the hips driving forward and catching the weight that we had done in the set before. If you want to try the single, the single arm weight, Decide what weight works best, but don't go too light because it changes things when you're too light because then things can move. We want enough weight that it takes it serious, but not enough weight that you feel that your body is twisting under it. All right, so let's go ahead and find your tall position. I want you to go down into your squat with your weight on the inside of your knee. And now I want you to drive your hips up and find that weight to your wrist. Make sure that your wrist looks like this does not look like this, does not look like this. We want to learn how to hold that wrist nice and strong with each one and make those hips generate the movement up. So let's go ahead and go for 20 seconds and just shoot those hips and try and get that weight onto your wrist before your, or get your hips up before the weight gets onto your wrist. So your hips are always faster than the arm. Make sure that at each position of rise on the bell, that your elbow is tracking wide to then catch the bell. Let's give me one more on this side, using that hip, and then rest it down. If you were just doing your double armed shoot throughs or your low squats, take a little break. You can hold the weight or you can set it down, whatever feels more comfortable. And now we're gonna go into another set just for the other arm. And if you want to do another set with those doubles, go for it. Let's go ahead and get the weight, load those hips back and wide, and now shoot through that space with your hips as you keep your arm loose and just chicken winging that weight up to your chest. We don't want a lot of banging action on our wrist. So if that's happening, odds are your hips might be moving slower than your arm or you may be letting that weight get too far away from your body so it gets momentum to swing and bang. Let's do one more. And then let's go ahead and set that weight down. And we're gonna do another plank set. So on this plank set, we're gonna go on our elbow. So again, whether that's on a counter for you or on a step or a block or a coffee table, 
or maybe just the mat. And so for this one, let's go ahead and get into whatever position that you're gonna be in. I'm not gonna add the straight plank on this time. Let's go ahead and just find your elbow, hand facing forward, stack your knees up, cock your feet, and make sure your butt is in no way rounded under. We wanna kinda stick it out. Make sure your butt crack is kinda open as it's pointing behind you. And so now let's go ahead and first, before we lift our hips up, push your ribs away from your elbow and lengthen the back of your neck. Then I want you to drive your knees out of your knees to push your hips forward. Now this is, might be a good position for a lot of you. You can float your arm up, you can just hold here. If you'd like to, you can lengthen your top leg out onto the floor, straighten out your bottom leg so your heel is still on the floor, and just keep those hips pushed forward as you maintain that plank. So again, if the knees is a better option for you, just bend your knees back down, stack them up, and keep holding for five, four, three, two, and bend your knees, stick your butt back, and let's come out of that. Nice job. So we're gonna flip to the other side. Make sure as you're setting up that you've got a nice tipped out butt position. And before you lift off, both knees are stacked, your feet are stacked and cocked. And we have a good drive away from the ribs on the floor to make sure that we're really pushing that chest away from the elbow before we drive our hips to that tall position. If you ever feel this in your, your back of your neck or in your shoulder, then you may just need to reposition your elbow a little bit. Maybe you're too far away, maybe you're too close. Make sure you kind of feel that out. If you'd like to straighten out your top leg and your bottom leg, do so without causing twist in your body. Keep your hips driving forward as you're pushing your chest away from your elbow, lengthening the back of your neck. Look down, look up if you need to take a little break to find neutral on your spine, and then just find forward again. And let's bend your knees, stick your butt back, and let's come slowly back up to your feet for our last shoot through set. Hopefully your blood's pumping. I know that I've got a little sweat going on. Maybe your air conditioning's cranking, you can't feel the sweat, but hopefully you're, you're feeling your blood pumping, you're getting things moving, and don't worry, in a few minutes we're going to try another shin box and see if all this hard work has been for good results, right? So let's go ahead and we're going to do a shoot through set one more time. The same rule applies. If the low squat is what you're most comfortable with right now, then stay there. If you'd like to do the double arm again, you're welcome to. If you choose to do the single, I'm okay with that. But what I'm going to say is we're going to do one set this time. So if you're going to do singles, you want to do three singles, switch arms, three singles, switch arms. Keep that alternating so that way you know you don't end up doing too much on one arm and not enough on the other arm. All right, so I'm going to go for a little heavier weight for a double shoot through. So whatever your challenge, whatever your thing is that you want to work on, totally up to you. And let's go ahead, find that position where you're pinching the back of your ribs, your ribs, front of your ribs are nice and anchored down, the back of your neck is nice and long. And let's go ahead and reach those hips back and use the hips to propel that weight to where your chin and your chest meet. Good, keep those arms pinching the sides of your body as you open your hips back. Make sure you don't fall into your heels and make sure you don't let your chin look up as you're going down. That's typically how we fall into our heels. Let's give me two more. And then rest that weight down safely to the floor. Grab a little drink of water. Our next thing is gonna be on the floor, but in a kneeling position. So if you need something a little softer under your knee, please grab it. Um, I'm also not opposed to if getting all the way down onto the floor with your knee causes you aggravation or just doesn't feel good. You could try this next exercise 
with a super block or a block under your knee and making sure that if you use that, that you've got a little bit of your toe touching the ground. We don't want our toe floating around where we might pull into that knee. We wanna kind of push our toe to the ground, which activates the right muscles as opposed to pinching in with the wrong ones. So if you're gonna use the block, I'm gonna talk through a little bit about the placement of the front leg, right? So when you set up, I want your hips and your shoulders square to the wall in front of you. Your foot's gonna start wide. And then I want you to slowly bring it in to find where can you still hold your balance without pinching and falling all over the place, right? And so if you don't have a block, that same thing is what we're looking for. Now I'm gonna to turn to the side as we switch legs and we kind of warm up this position on the other leg. So if you're on the block, go ahead and just switch legs and go on to the other leg. If you're on the floor, go ahead and switch legs. And I'm gonna show this position. So my toes are tucked under, my foot's in front. I've got a 90 degree position on anything in my legs. And then I'm gonna slowly walk my foot in to figure out where is my challenge of balance. Now, it really helps to drive through your knee into the ground to push that hip nice and straight for balance. If that hip is pinching or your knees are pinching together, this will feel very tippy toppy. So if you need to have something to, to have as a light grip, that's okay. But try opening your hips and pushing length into the front of that thigh, down into the ground, and that usually that cleans up your balance just a little bit. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch back and we're gonna do another one on the uh, first leg. But if you'd like to add a little weight to this one, or if a weight sounds a little bit scary, you can use a band and I'll show you what to do with a band instead. If you don't have anything, then that's okay. You're gonna do the action with your arms without really holding on to anything. So let me grab. And the weight that you're holding, we don't want it to be really heavy. Mine's 14 pounds, so I'm saying something under 10 pounds uh, for you guys, and if you really want to challenge yourself, who am I to tell you not to do 14 pounds? Just make sure that as your heart beating and adding the action that I'm getting ready to show you, that it's never too much that it's buckling your cores. You have to be able to kind of fake a pass with your arms without letting the weight break your posture. So just so you understand what weight to grab and what's your best choice, that way that might help you. All right, so first we're gonna start with one leg on the ground, one foot in front. Walk your foot back into that middle position. Make sure you're never pinching in with your knees. You're kind of keeping them a little bit wide. That helps drive into that knee that's on the ground to keep that balance on that back leg nice and strong. And then you're gonna just fake it. It's like you wanna throw somebody a ball, but you're really not gonna throw it. You just pull it back to yourself. You don't want your shoulders to come out. You don't want your ribs to pop and you don't want your chin to pop up. We just wanna lock into our posture as we fake pass our arms and make sure we don't get a pinch across reaction from our legs. Let's give me one more. And then we're gonna switch. And again, if you're on your block, that's perfectly fine. Stay on the block, just switch legs. If you're on the ground, same thing, find your position. And so find that nice length through the hip and the, and the quad and find the foot closer to the middle. And then let's give me a fake heartbeat. Just a really quick movement that the core has to stabilize through. Looking forward, feeling the length in the back of the neck and never letting anything buckle as you throw that weight into that fake pass action. Let's give me one more and then safely set the weight down close to your body and bring your leg down and sit back onto a comfortable position, whether that's on your foot, on your feet, the floor, wherever. And I apologize, but next time, if you want to do a heartbeat with the band instead of the weight, that's a great, uh, a great way to progress to using the weight. So uh, that's more than, more than fine. So the next thing we're gonna do is one, one more, and actually it still gives you the chance to use the band if you wanna try it, but we're gonna come up to a one level higher progression for the legs. So if 
this action that I'm going to demonstrate, a hover lunge, doesn't look like something that's able for you to perform today, you might get there down the road if you continue working on the same position that we were just in. So what I'm going to say is the next position is going to be a hover lunge, which means we're going to bend that back knee, lifting the heel as well as the front heel, keeping everything nice and tight as our knees stay loose and wide from each other. This time we can use our band. If you want to use your kettlebell again, that's fine. But we're going to do a heartbeat in this position. So if you're here, go ahead and give me 10 more. If you're not here, go ahead and get onto your block or get here and work on giving me about six of these heartbeats, keeping that back hip straight and making sure your body doesn't shift forward and let that back knee start bending or start straightening out. We really need the back knee to be at a 90 degree position. Let's give me one more. And if you just got into it from the, from the hover, then take a couple more and finish that set. We're going to do the other leg in a second. If you want to grab a little drink of water. Same thing. Let's take a big step. If you need to be on the block or the floor, that's fine. Now, whoops, same leg. Make sure you switch. Go ahead and bend that back knee. Find that hip nice and straight, lift the front heel, and then give me some heartbeats. Focusing on your knees, being wide from one another, while the hip stays tucked and you feel a big stretch right here. If you're doing it right, you should feel that big stretch in the front of your hip. Give me three more heartbeats. Stay low on that back knee, don't creep forward and then push everything away from the ground to come on up. All right, so let's go ahead and I wanna go into just a little bit of some glute bridges. So let's find our way to our mat with a block if you have one. Uh, something, a typical yoga block would be better. We don't need a big super block for this one. And as you get into position for this, you don't need a big head support. You shouldn't have anything firm under your head. But if laying on your back causes this feeling like your head is hanging off a cliff, then I need you to have some sort of small towel or something soft that can support your neck during your resting position. Because when we lift our hips up in the air, we don't want something under your neck because that'll put you in a lot of flexion. So let's go ahead and lay down. Find your heels together. So it's important that your heels are touching each other. You can feel the inner part of your heel with, of each heel touching each other. Then put the block in its skinny position between your knees, maybe between your thighs a little bit for comfort. And then I want you to use your hands on the mat to put a little stretch on the mat and push your elbows into the ground. What that's going to do is activate our abs and lats. So we go there and then we're going to push through our heels to raise our hips in the air and then we drop them down. Push through the hips to drive them long and tall and then release them to come down. Pushing through the hips and knees and trying to slide your heels away from you even though they're not going anywhere. Avoid trying to pull your heels towards you in a bridge or you'll end up getting a lot of hamstring cramps. Same thing, just make sure that as you go up you're squeezing that block and keeping your ribs anchored, we don't want to pop up. So if there were a hand, make sure you can crunch that, those ribs away from the hand at the top. Let's hold up here. Feel the length in the back of your neck, the ribs anchoring down, the heels pushing into the ground, the knees squeezing, the butt squeezing. Five, four, three, two, and release everything to go back down. Perfect. All right, so what I'd like to do is do a little shin box test here. We're getting ready to get into a little bit of stretch and release and maybe a little abs, but what I want you just to feel is an assessment to see, did our hips get opened up in that workout? And so same thing, top leg sneaks forward. Oh, sorry. Top leg goes back, bottom leg sneaks forward. Find whatever position that feels straightest to you even if it requires a hand because we don't want to feel anything twisting. Hopefully this feels a little looser and if you're not sure which side compares, because I always forget to, 
Go ahead and turn to the other side. Slide that front leg forward or bottom leg forward. Find the, the toe even with the knee, foot resting on the thigh, and just assess that position. And again, hopefully you're feeling that even if it's still tight, that you might notice that you're more upright. In a client the other day, they started this, their, their workout like this. And then by the end of it, we did the shin box again, and they looked like this. But they were really still saying, wow, this is tight. And so you're always going to have, you're typically going to have some tightnesses in places that, that don't just magically disappear. But we want to feel and notice that if we can make that kind of change in range of motion, you're, and you still feel the tightness a little bit, we made progress and that means that we need to keep making progress with the hips moving well and making sure that we're not getting stuck in our hips so that our backs become problems. So let's go ahead and I want to finish with a little rolling and no it's not with a ball. Um, I'd like to do a little bit of a baby roll sequence and I know I don't have much time so we may not be able to get to roll uh, your feet or work on your hips so I'm going to say if you've got time, please do something on your feet or your hips on the ball when we finish. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and I want you to lay down and I want you to have a light head support for this one and you also need a wedge if you have a wedge. If you don't have a wedge and you, have, you can use a little hand towel or something folded to kind of give you a little support. But just make sure you're not flattening your back with the wedge, you're just using it so that when your legs are in this position that they can comfortably hold without feeling like they have to hold your legs up with the hip flexors. It's a hip flexor support. That's, that's kind of what I use the wedge for. And so what I want to do is we're just going to do some full rolls to one side. So cock your feet, but leave them low. I do not want a typical tabletop with your legs up there. It puts too much strain on your hip flexors. So just relax your feet down, but keep your toes cocked. And I want you just to roll to your side, keeping the back leg wide. The biggest problem that people have with this one, and if you need less wedge on this one, that's fine. The biggest people, problem people have with this one is that the back trailing leg will fall into the space. That back leg is what holds you from falling onto your side. So we're gonna do about three more of these. If you've worked with me before, you can go into some up onto your elbows, but today in this class, I'm just going to do the full rolls. And I want you to imagine that I'm trying to lift your hand up here. Don't let me lift your hand. You need to keep that bottom elbow planted on the floor and keep your abs and lats locked in tight so that your, the back hand and leg are always on the same plane with each other. They're never one falling or one reaching in a different direction. They're always working to hold together. Let's go one more, keeping the feet cocked, keeping the knees wide, seeing how well you can hold that position without letting the tension go light in your elbow. And then let's go ahead and find your way back to the middle. Rest your feet down for a second. We're gonna go to the other side next. And just again, remember, if you're feeling that your legs in the air is weighing on your back and is does not feel good to you, then that's okay. Rest, get the ball, roll your hip a little bit, do something else. I don't want you to do something that provokes anything that, that feels painful to you. But with the next one, we're going to bring those feet back up into a low position but cocked. You're going to reach the other arm up towards the sky while the, the other arm is down elbow to the floor and not letting anybody pick it off. And so now the right, the shoulder blade behind is going to leave the ground. I don't want you to try and keep that shoulder blade on the floor. It is going to follow the body. Just make sure that that, that shoulder, that trailing shoulder blade is always pulling away from your belly button. We don't want it trying to fall into the space towards the floor. We want to kind of Say it and the, the back knee are trying to hold on to the back of the room while everything else is trying to turn towards the front of the room or the direction you're turning. Let's give me one more, keeping that elbow down. Keep those back leg and arms from falling into the space through the ribs and the lats and the abs. And then slowly make your way back onto your back. If you feel yourself 
falling or, or flopping around on that one, slow down and really focus on no momentum rocking back and forth. It's all about control and you should feel this area firing up. All right, that's all I have for you today. There are, if you'd like to do some more abs, go for it. If you have some time, you want to do a little rolling, go for it. Uh, you can reassess your shin box one last time. Actually, that actually made mine feel a little bit better, even with just some ab work. So challenge yourself, have a great weekend, and I will see you next week.